Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. So one of the movies that I've actually gotten requests to review during this period of self-isolation or lockdown is the Man With No Name trilogy, A Fistful of Dollars for a Few Dollars More, and The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. And I've actually wanted to review these movies for a while, back in 2018 when Red Dead Redemption 2 was coming out. But at the time that game came out, I was already knee-deep in reviewing the Halloween series because it was October. So now with nothing new really coming out for who knows how long, I think now's the perfect time to review this trilogy. But first, like with Star Wars, we gotta pay respects to Akira Kurosawa. Because without Kurosawa, this series of movies would have never existed. And we're going to kick things off with my review for Akira Kurosawa's Yojimbo, which came out in 1961 and stars Toshiro Mafune, who would have been 100 years old as of this year. The movie takes place in the final years of the Edo period in Japan and follows a ronin played by Toshiro Mafune, who wanders into what seems to be an abandoned town, but is actually run by two crime lords, and these two opposing crime lords and their gangs are basically competing for dominance in the town. But this lone samurai seems to take notice that it's driven out a lot of businesses, and the only real business that's booming in this town is coffin making. So he starts to play both gangs as they fight for competition to hire this samurai as a bodyguard, or a yojimbo, hence the film's title. And this is where things get really interesting because you know all three of these parties have their own goals. So for as long as my channel has been around, I have only talked about one Akira Kurosawa movie in length, and that was The Hidden Fortress because that was the movie that influenced George Lucas's Star Wars series. And I have talked about Kurosawa's other films in my top 100 favorite movies list, like Seven Samurai. But Yojimbo right here is my favorite Akira Kurosawa movie. This movie just screams perfection all around. And I know a lot of people out there tout Seven Samurai as Akira Kurosawa's best film. And in some respects, maybe it's his best movie, but there's a clear difference between the best and your favorite. And Yojimbo is my favorite for a multitude of reasons. I mean, for one, no disrespect to Seven Samurai. It's in my top 100 favorite movies, but that three hours is just something that makes it harder to re-watch Seven Samurai as opposed to Yojimbo. But what makes Yojimbo so perfect for me is that more than any of the other Kurosawa Samurai movies, it's a samurai western, and it's clear when you watch this movie that not only did it influence a whole new wave of western films that I'm going to talk about next week, but it was also influenced by western films as well. The abandoned town that the samurai wanders into is straight out of a western movie, except it's set in Japan. A lot of the characters in this movie do represent western archetypes as well. You have the tavern owner who befriends the samurai and is one of his few allies. You have the coffin maker whose business is booming because of all the things that are going on in this town. You have the crime bosses and the thugs themselves are pretty much Western thugs, except instead of guns, they have katanas. And I've mentioned the samurai a few times throughout this review, which is a perfect segue into Toshiro Mufune as the Ronin. He is fantastic in this movie. This is his most iconic role to date. You've seen this character mimicked in so many other adaptations or parodies of Yojimbo. And yeah, the elephant in the room for next week. We'll get to that next week. But in terms of just a character within this movie, he's very slick. He's very smart when it comes to playing these two gangs and making them really fight each other. And when it actually comes to fighting people with his sword, he's very calculating and he's very strategic. There's that one sequence in the movie where he goes into a house and kills several bodyguards without even getting killed or sliced up at all. And he's pretty much, I hate to bring up Marvel, but whatever. He's like the samurai version of Steve Rogers. He can map out exactly how a situation's gonna play out. And 
people are gonna die and it's not gonna be him. And it's very clear that Toshiro Mifune was dedicated to this role. I mean, by 1961, Akira Kurosawa and Toshiro Mifune had a really great working relationship. But one story that happened on set is that there was one day where Akira Kurosawa pretty much yelled at Toshiro Mifune for showing up late. And throughout the rest of the shooting schedule, he said, you know what, I'm going to show up at set at 6 a.m. sharp in full makeup and costume because I am dedicated to this role. And yeah, watching this movie, you can tell. And to give you a clear idea on how talented Toshiro Mifune was as an actor, Compare this role to his role in Rashomon from 1950, and he pretty much transforms in either of those roles. I mean, sure, he's playing a samurai, but one is more crazy and unhinged, and he's pretty much a bandit, and the other one seems to be very noble and smart and authoritative. So it really shows how impressive Toshiro Mifune was as an actor. One of the other great aspects about this movie is the score done by Masato Sato. I don't remember if I mentioned this in my review for The Hidden Fortress, but Masato Sato became Akira Kurosawa's longtime composer after the first composer, Fumio Hayasaka, died. And Sato is to Kurosawa what Akira Ifakube is to Ishiro Honda. And in my opinion, this is Masao Sato's best score. And what's so great about this score is that it can blend several types of tones without really tripping over one another. When the score has to sound heroic, it sounds heroic. When it sounds lighthearted or ominous, it nails both of those two aspects perfectly. And sometimes it manages to mix the two of them together. The first thing the Ronin actually sees when he arrives into town is a dog walking by with a human hand in his mouth. And the score sounds very jolly and lighthearted when the dog's walking by but then it suddenly transitions into ominous when we see Toshiro Mifune's reaction to seeing this dog. And that's another great thing about the movie is that it has a very dark sense of humor, like the dog with the hand in its mouth I present to you, ladies and gentlemen. And maybe some of the other bits of dark humor come from the way that whenever characters die, they die in the most over-the-top manner possible. I mean, I know there's a lot of Japanese movies out there with over-the-top deaths like they're in a Looney Tunes cartoon. But I think given the dark comedic tone of this movie, it stands out a lot more. And it was actually through this movie where I started noticing very over-the-top deaths in Japanese film. The cinematography is also beautiful as well. I've talked about how beautiful the cinematography was in The Hidden Fortress and how Kurosawa can have these huge wide shots where every character is in focus. There are several shots in here that are wide shots where you'll have characters close up to the camera and then you'll have characters at a distance and everyone's in focus. The big example in this movie is the big final showdown once the Ronin returns to town after barely escaping with his life. And again, it plays into the big Western aspect. This... God, this movie is just so good. This movie is just so brilliant. A few weeks ago, Turner Classic Movies was honoring Toshiro Mifune's 100th birthday by showing several Kurosawa films featuring Toshiro Mifune. And Yojimbo was playing late at night. And to give you an idea of how much I adore this movie, I said to myself, you know what? I know it's late at night, but I gotta watch Yojimbo. I just adore this movie. I don't care if I stay up until 1 in the morning. I am watching this movie, and I cannot just watch parts of it. I have to watch the whole thing. And if that's not the indication of a movie where I say, get off your ass and go see it right now, then I don't know what is. I mean, this again, this movie is just so perfect. The music, the performances, the look, the influences in terms of what influenced this movie and what this movie would end up influencing. There is a reason why this movie is in the top 30 of my 100 favorite movies of all time. More specifically, at number 21. It is just that brilliant of a film. If there was ever one Japanese film out there that isn't the original Godzilla that I would want to show to somebody who had never seen a Japanese film before, it would be Yojimbo. Because you're introduced to one of the greatest directors of all time, you're seeing one of the most influential movies of all time, and it's easily one of the most accessible foreign films out there. I absolutely love this movie. And there you go, that's my review for Yojimbo, and next week I will be talking about the movie that 
was often deemed to be an unofficial remake of Yojimbo, a fistful of dollars. But first, I want to know what you guys think about Yojimbo. If you've seen it, what did you think? What is your favorite Kurosawa film? Is it Yojimbo? Is it something else entirely? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and of course, leave a comment. Support my Patreon page, follow me on social media. And until then, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.